Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to Zoe Kids. What's your favorite fruit? Maybe you like apples or bananas or watermelons? Fruits are some of the most amazing things in God's creation. For the next few weeks, we're going to talk about fruit, but not fruits that you eat like these. What we're going to talk about is the fruit of the Spirit. Hmm, what is the fruit of the Spirit? Well, it's something that grows in our lives that you can see, even if you can't eat it. <laughs> in Galatians 5, Paul wrote that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When the Bible talks about fruit, it's talking about something good that God causes to grow in us. People who believe in Jesus and trust in God's Word should have these qualities growing in their lives because the Holy Spirit is in us. Each week, we'll talk about one of these qualities. The first fruit of the Spirit we want to look at today is love. Can you spell that? L-O-V-E, love. The Bible tells us that God is love and that the most important thing for human beings is for us to love God and to love one another. But what is love? Have you ever asked that question? Maybe you love a friend or a special stuffed animal, hot wheels or fun outdoorsy things. Maybe you love to eat your favorite food or dessert. Mmm, yummy. When we say the word love, we normally mean a feeling we have of happiness towards something or someone in our life. But the Bible tells us that love is more than just a feeling. It's a commitment. And the kind of love that comes from God, the fruit of the Spirit, is also an action. Love isn't just something you feel, it's something that you do. Can you think of a time when somebody did something loving towards you? According to God, we love others when we commit to doing what is good for somebody else, even if it's hard for us. Jesus told a story once about what love looks like, the story of the Good Samaritan. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. <laughs> they stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along. But when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. Another man who worked in the temple who was called a Levite walked over and looked at him lying there. Uh, huh? But he also passed by on the other side. Then a Samaritan came along. Oh. Samaritans were hated by Jews. They were seen as lesser people and Jews would not interact with them. But when the Samaritan saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. One room, please. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. In this story, Jesus taught that we should be like the Samaritan and love those who God puts in our life. But this story also shows us how hard love can be. If you remember, the priest and the Levite didn't want to show love to the man who was hurt because it would have been difficult for them and made their lives harder. But the Samaritan loved the man even though it cost him his time, his money, and his effort. The Bible tells us that when we love others, we are acting like God who loved us first. 
All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have turned away from God to live life as our own kings. But God sent Jesus to this world to live the perfect life we could never live and die on the cross for our sins. Jesus loved us, even though it hurt, and he paid the cost, even though he never sinned. In the same way, when we come to believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit helps us to love others, even when it costs us something. Sometimes loving people is hard, or difficult, or dangerous. They might not love us back, or they might not appreciate it. But when we know how God has loved us, it helps us to love Him back and love others through our feelings and our actions. Your craft this week is a fruit of the spirit tree with nine empty spaces to put your badges on. You'll need to print out the tree and your badges ahead of time. But we'll be coloring in one badge a week, starting with this one, love. When you see this badge, remember to think of ways in which you can actively love somebody else. See you next time.